You are so, so faithful. We thank you for that. We just pray that you will open our hearts in gratitude and receptiveness to hear what Bonnie has to share with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 because I heard my head one way or the other. Just wave your hand and I'll repeat it. So thank you for having me today. It's my pleasure to come and, and represent New Family Life Services. I've been the director there now for 23 years and it's just amazing to watch God work in a, a ministry. Um, I take no credit. It is every time I strive to make New Family Life Services something God says, okay, you want to do this? You go for it. <laughs> and when I say, Lord, help me, he says, okay, now let me do this, right? So it's all um, because of him that we have uh, New Family Life Services. So um, today with me is our house mom, Kathleen, and we were introduced earlier, but she um, is a, a backbone of New Family Life Services she lives in our maternity home 24-7. Um, she cares for the girls that come through our doors there. Um, just a heart to minister to these young women that may have never had a mom. Thank you. So you have a little yellow paper. If you didn't get one, I have a few more up here that we can pass back to you. This is a little fact sheet. Um, and the stats are from last year, okay? So these are our year-end stats. We served 131 clients last year. Clients live in Stevens, Ferry, and Ponderay counties, and we have a couple um, from Spokane County that wander up here once in a while. We had 47 first-time clients last year. We had 692 <coughs> visits to the center, and Visits to Helping Hands, we had 506 visits to the Helping Hands out of those 692 visits. So we have a Helping Hands where young women can come in and they have a list of items that they can get free of charge. So baby clothing, diapers, furniture, uh, maternity wear, um, baby furniture, we don't carry regular furniture, but just about anything you would need for a baby or a mommy, we have it in our little building and they're welcome to that. We clean it, it all comes through donations, so we clean it, launder it, make it ready for people to take home and use. And so 506 visits to the Helping Hands last year, 420 visits into our boutique. Our boutique is where people donate brand new things and then they get a little price tag put on them. And then our clients earn what we call boutique bucks or mommy money or daddy dollars, however they want to refer to it, okay? Um, we used to just call it mommy money and the, then we started getting dads coming in using the services and they didn't really like to earn mommy money. <laughs> so we had to you know, change our, our money um, to daddy dollars and so now we just call it boutique bucks. But So they do things that make themselves more responsible for their pregnancy, if they're pregnant and carrying a child. So doctor visits, um, any kind of classes that they take, we give them, we, we honor that and give them this boutique money, okay? And then after delivery, keeping baby doctor appointments, participating in the WIC program, um, again, parenting classes through our center or um, anywhere that if a church is offering it, we will honor those um, classes as well, Bible studies, church attendance, we honor all of that stuff. And so it's just an encouragement to our clients to be able to, you know, be, be a little more responsible for themselves and their children. And so they can earn this money and then they can shop in the boutique. And with um, some of our more expensive items like our car seats and our strollers and things like that, 
we encourage them to also take additional parenting classes to earn those things. So it's a, it doesn't just get them mommy money or daddy dollars for donating things back to the center, but it also encourages them to get into the educational part of what we offer. And then uh, last year we had 65 Earn While, you, Earn While You Learn classes that were taken and we housed three um, in our maternity home. Now our maternity home can house six clients total. Um, that's three moms and three babies. Um, we could have housed more, but by the time we got everything remodeled, um, the fire marshal had changed the uh, whack RCW and uh, anything over housing over six required um, the water suppression yeah. for fire. <laughs> and we had heard so many horror stories about those that we did not want to go there. So we just said six is plenty for us right now. <laughs> okay, if you jump across the sheet there, after 12 years of searching for a medical director, we find God finally brought a medical director to us and we hired her last October. And it's just, it's such a God story that, I mean, I could be here all day telling you God stories about the center, but um, this woman is from California and she carries a Washington State license to, um, for nurse practitioner. And, uh, it's just exciting. I mean, I strove and strove and strove trying to talking to every doctor in our area and people saying, oh, did you talk to this doctor? Did you talk to that? Yes, I've talked to them. Nobody has time. Nobody, you know, because there's doctors are busy in our area. And so God, out of the blue, I hadn't talked about this for probably a year. And this lady calls and said, can I meet with you? I'm interested in this position. I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> so, um, and it goes right hand in hand with the vision that God gave us in um, 2020 about the medical services and owning our own building. And I mean, he gave us a five-year plan um, and we are right at the tail end of that. And it included um, purchasing the building that we're now in um, and having medical services and um, by 2024 and it's and it's happening I, and, and no fault of mine at all <laughs> at all so it's just very exciting so we will be able to go through the process to become an accredited limited medical center and we begin that process on May 8th which is super exciting to me I'm just like Ooh, so excited that God's just opening the doors. So we'll be having training with a consulting firm that's going to help us get everything mapped out and, and help step by step where we need to go and what we need to do. So it's very exciting. And we will be able to again offer free pregnancy testing, hopefully within the next six months, and um, limited ultrasound by 2024, which was huge, right? We know that's very huge. So exciting stuff. So that's just a little bit of what's happening in the center. Uh, now, what's happening in our nation? Most of you probably know that Roe versus Wade fell last year, right? Woohoo! <laughs> Everybody's so enthusiastic about that. Because that was, we live in Washington. Oh, what's that? Because we live in Washington. <laughs> right? Hey, we should be excited about that, though, because it shows that God is hearing our prayers, right? Oh, yeah, and even though we live in this Washington, he still hears our prayers. And he has us here for a specific purpose, and that is to change our Washington. I went to Washington, D.C. December of 2021. It was so impactful to me that I told the, the little group that I was with, I'm coming back here, you know, at least every six months to pray. Because it's just so, I mean... You can pray here, but you go back there and you're in the midst of the lion's den and you're praying, it's a whole different ball game. And when I got on the plane to come back home, I heard God say, but I have you in Washington. You like, you think it's important in this Washington, but I, I want you in, in your Washington. That's where I've placed you is in this Washington. And we have a huge amount to do right here in this Washington. 
So Roe versus Wade was struck down. Did that make abortion illegal? No. It sent the decision where it needed to go back to the states. So each state now can decide on its own where they stand. And many have decided that it's illegal for their state. Unfortunately, our state hasn't decided that yet. But, but God, that's my favorite phrase right now, Amen. but God. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So meanwhile, in our Washington, in 2022, as soon as Roe versus Wade was um, overturned, our governor signed a pact with California and Oregon that was called the um, Multi-State Commitment to Reproductive Freedom. And they had had to have worked on this for quite a while before June 24th, but it was signed and, and put into a, an agreement on June 24th by those three governors. And it um, basically set, says that pursuing a Washington state constitutional amendment that solidifies the right to choice in Washington state. So our governor wants to change our state constitution to make it a constitutional right in Washington state to obtain an abortion, okay? And that legislature is currently sitting in Olympia. It's written, it's been introduced, but praise God, it's still in its house where it hasn't come to the floor yet to be voted on. So it's, it's there, it's sitting there, but there's been no action taken on it so far. It also included an executive order that directs the Washington State Patrol to refuse cooperation when, with investigo investigatory, I hope I said that right, requests related to abortion that come from agencies in states that don't allow abortion. So if uh, a woman from Texas wanted to come to Washington State to obtain an abortion, our, our police department has no say in in getting them back to Texas. There's no, what do they call it, extradition? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was an agreement. One million dollars in emergency funds to better ensure reproductive care clinics in Washington State can provide care to every patient who walks through their doors. And you, I, I hear you ask, where did that one million come from? <laughs> Taxpayer funds, okay? So you're, you're guaranteeing that anyone, doesn't have to be a Washingtonian state um, resident, anyone that comes to Washington State can obtain an abortion and you get to pay for it. Um, it ensures hospital mergers don't result in the erosion of access to abortion care. So if we have a, uh, like our Providence hospitals don't allow abortion. So if they took over a hospital that does allow abortion, then they can't come against that. Then their, their whole facility has to allow abortions at that point. Increased protection and safeguards involving patient data. And this is where they want to close um, crisis pregnancy centers down, is this um, safeguard for patient data. Um, because they consider us, those medical centers, as false um, uh, medical clinics because they won't give a patient their, uh, a slip that says, yes, you're pregnant because people are taking those then because they offer free pregnancy testing, right? So they take those slips to DSHS and they can obtain an abortion then because they have, a, a, their pregnancy is, is uh, recorded. And then any person of any age has reproductive privacy rights and has the right to consult for, for and obtain an abortion or birth control independently. And if you go to um, our health website, Washington, W Washington Health Department. Let's see, what is that? I can't remember the website right now, but just put in Washington Health Department in your search bar. It'll come up and you can read all the lacks that tell you exactly who can and cannot obtain an abortion. Okay. And so that wording, any person of any age mm -hmm. has reproductive right privacy in Washington State. So your 10 year old, your eight year old. <laughs> Reproductive privacy rights means that you will never know if they obtained an abortion or not. You don't have to be consulted, you don't have to be contacted. They can go to a school nurse, they can go independently into one of these clinics and obtain whatever they want to without you ever knowing. Now, if you want, if they wanted their ears pierced, 
you got to yeah. go with them and sign, right? <laughs> if they need to take uh, prescription medicine at school, you have to have this whole you know, rigmarole about them being able to take their antibiotic at school or their aspirin or whatever. But to choose life or death, you have, you know, they can just, any age. Okay, so just remember that. So within this last couple weeks, our Governor Inslee purchased 30,000 abortion pills. He's stockpiling these medical um, ways to perform abortions. Pardon me? RE486. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Mifepristone and mis misoprostol. I can, big words for me. <laughs> but basically, he um, purchased these at $42.50 a pill with taxpayer dollars. So $1.28 million went into obtaining abortion pills for the state of Washington. Um, Washington University, or the University of Washington, obtained another 10,000 pills. So we have stockpiled now 40,000, plus whatever we had before, of these abortion pills. And they figure that will last a Washington state about four years. That's a lot of abortions. And they don't have to be, that you don't have to have a physician's uh, prescription for them. You just walk in over the counter, obtain it. There's no age limit because remember that you have any age can obtain and have reproductive right privacy, right? So we're talking, there's no questions asked. They're just going to hand them out. So Mifepristone is the first pill. It's a two-pill process. The, the woman takes the first pill. This, uh, this medicine or drug uh, blocks the progesterone hormone, which is the hormone that stabilizes the lining of the uterus, and that, pr that um, produces oxygen for the baby. So once that, is, that medication is taken, the oxygen supply is cut off. And we know what happens if we stop breathing, right? Mm -hmm. So then uh, a couple days later, they take, they're take they sent home with the second pill. But now they can they used to have to go into the clinic and get these. They took the first, they made, made sure they took the first one before they left the clinic. And then they took the second one a couple days later. The second one produces contractions to dispel the baby. And so um, these women were having these babies at home. It's just the product of a missed period, uh, just a clump of cells, you know. But without a doctor's prescription or oversight, women in their late first and second trimester were getting these, this medicine. In two, from 2000 to 2018, 24 women have died from the abortion pill. Um, probably more than that, but these are the statistics that I could find. 97 um, had ectopic pregnancies, so a pregnancy that ended up in the fallopian tube. Uh, 4,195 had an adverse ad effects. 1,042 were hospitalized. 599 required blood transfusions from heavy bleeding. And 418 developed infections from this medication. So there is no, they're, they're toting this as a safe option for abortion, right? There is no safe option for abortion. <clears throat> Abortion isn't, or I mean, pregnancy is not a disease. It's, you know, not going to kill you most of the time. There are extreme circumstances where that might happen, but most of the time pregnancy ends with a healthy mom and a healthy baby. Um, medication abortions account for 60% of abortions in Washington State. So if you look at the statistics and you think that abortion is going down, don't be fooled. It isn't going down because they don't have to track this medication and it's rising. All right. A few other things that have happened this year in our Senate, um, Senate Bill 5599, supporting youth and young adults seeking protected health health care services. Um, the previous law, and this, this bill has passed, it passed, I think, either last week or the week before, the previous law required reporting of a housed runaway within 72 hours to parents or CPS. 
you can't harbor a runaway, right? If a runaway comes to your home, you need to notify them. I'll try to talk them into going back home or take them home. If you can't do that, then you need to notify police, CPS, or their parents, right, that you have this child. Otherwise, it's what? Kidnapping, yes. Okay, <laughs> we're clear there. The current law that passed the, within the, the last two weeks um, has no time limit to report. So if, a, if you want to house this or harbor this minor, you don't have to report it anymore. Um, the place sheltering the minor has full authority to assist the minor in obtaining these health care services, which um, include abortion, puberty blocking um, medications, gender reassignment surgery, or any other health service prescribed by a doctor to treat dysphoria. Okay, so imagine your young person is mad because you won't go along with them um, first off, they can report you now as of a bill that passed last year. Um, um, what is that? Uh, that you were a... Uh, oh, come on, brain work. Uh, you're a, a terrorist now to them because you won't allow them to do you know, gender reassignment surgery. Um, I know, it's crazy. We've gone crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, your young person takes off and they, there's no, there's no lim time limit for reporting. So they can uh, assist minors in obtaining those services without ever contacting the police, CPS, or their parents. And that happened in our state just a couple weeks ago. So yes, we have a long battle and it, it feels sometimes like a losing battle, but God, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but God. And we can't, we can't give up. We can't give up the fight. I know people are like moving to Idaho and Montana and they're just leaving the state, right? There's no hope for Washington, but there is. So if you go to First Chronicles um, chapter 16 and verse 24 says, declare his glory among the heathen. That's a big job, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all the nations. There is nothing more marvelous than how God created humankind, right? Yeah. You go to Genesis 2, 7, tells us that we're created in his image, that he molded us and he formed us and he has a plan. Um, the um, uh, Proverbs, is it Proverbs? No, it's Psalms 138, mm -hmm. tells you how you're... Uh, formed, you know, wonderfully made, right? And so as humans, we're the only living thing God created and formed with his hands and gave his breath to, that he actually breathed into man, right? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit came in and made man a living being. That's one of my most favorite. I mean, birth is nothing short than miraculous, right? I mean... Where two cells come together and a, and a human is made, your, your hair color is determined, your eye color, some of your characteristical traits, you know, some of your mannerisms. It blows me away. My, my husband used to eat his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on his hand when he was a kid, right? I never knew this before I married him, but he would put his peanut butter and jelly sandwich on his hand and he would... Said, well, that's weird, honey. I've never seen anybody do that. Guess what? Our first son, how he started eating his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and he did not see his father do this because I told his father that's weird and you're not going to do that in front of our children, right? <laughs> Put his peanut butter. Now, how? Why? I mean, you you just watch these little people and they have these weird little characteristics, and you think, wow, I can remember doing that, you know. And it's all because of what God has created in them and who they belong to and how they're formed, right? It's just amazing. Proverbs 8, 21. Oh, let me go back. Um, Genesis 1, 26 through 27. We all know the creation story, right? From Genesis 1, God spoke and there was. There was light, there was earth, there were animals, there was water, there was everything, right? He spoke it, and then he stopped and he formed man, and he breathed into man. So if God's words are alive and create life, and he's breathed that breath into us, 
what happens with our words? Do you think that they could be creative? I think so, because Proverbs 18.21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, is God's word real, or is it made up? I mean, this kind of, I'm kind of sometimes a black and white person. It says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if we're speaking death, oh, our governor is such a and all, are those life words to him? They're death words, right? And they're just going to continue to push him down that, that straight road, not straight, that crooked road, <laughs> right? The path that he's on, the slippery slope that he's already on. But if we pray for him, as our Bible tells us, to pray for those that are in leadership, we pray for him and we declare over him the things that God has for him. Maybe, just maybe, he could be like Pharaoh, right? God hardened Pharaoh's heart, but then he also softened it and, and he let the people go. And then he hardened it and so that, God, that Israel would learn, right, that God is the God of everything. And he is our redeemer, he's our provider, he's our protector, he's everything to us. So death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will in and indulge in it eat its fruit. So if you're speaking life words, you're going to eat the fruit of life, right? If you're speaking death words, you're going to eat the, death, the fruit of death and bear the consequences of your words. Matthew 12, 33 through 37, Jesus tells the disciples, he was talking to them, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is recognized and judged by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you're evil? For the, for the mouth speaks out of, what, out of that which fills the heart. The good man from his inner good treasures brings out good things, and the evil man from his inner evil treasures brings out evil things. But I tell you, in the day of judgment, people will have to give an account for every careless or useless word they speak. Well, sometimes we get in the habit of joking around, right? I mean, okay, sometimes I get in the habit of joking around <laughs> <laughs> and say, some, say things that I probably should, that I'm speaking death over, right? But the thing that we have to remember is God is a God of first, second, third, fourth, fifth chances, right? And if we are quick to repent, what is he quick to do? Forgive us, right? And so if we can repent and say, God, forgive me, take those thing, those bad words that I spoke back, you can pray for crop failure. You don't have to have a harvest of bad weeds, <laughs> okay? It's good. <laughs> so... For by your words you will, by your words reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your wood, words rejecting Jesus, you will be condemned and sentenced. So God values life. Psalm 127.3, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Proverbs 24.11-12 through 12 tells us, rescue those who are being taken away to death and those who stagger on to the slaughter. Can you just see these women? They're carrying their children to death and they're staggering to the, I mean, blindly, because our society has lied to them, right? That this is gonna ruin your life. It's, you know, your hopes and dreams are, are gonna die if you, you know, all those lies and they believe them and they stagger off to the slaughter. Hold them back from their doom. God wants us to defend life. That's right. Amen. He wants us to defend life. So as I was praying last year, um, we have a big dinner usually. Well, we didn't do a dinner this year, but we have a fundraiser usually in November. And as I was praying into that this past year, I said, God, I, I need a theme. What do you want, you know, what do you want me to talk about here? And he said, life. I want you to talk about life. And I said, okay, well, that's usually what we talk about when we're there, right? <laughs> I said, I need, I need something, Lord. And he said, he gave me the state motto, the evergreen state, right? Washington is the evergreen state. So I, I kind of, a. Uh, uh, word person. So I started tearing it apart. Evergreen is a compound word. You have ever and then you have green, right? So I'm looking at this evergreen. Um, so what does the word ever mean? It means at any time, at all times, 
always and increasingly consistently. Okay, well that's okay. Always, mm -hmm. ever, right? Okay. And then green, biblically, green, uh, the color green means life. It represents life, biblically. But if you ask Siri what it means, um, she'll tell you first, well, my Siri is a lady's voice, so maybe your Siri's a guy, but anyway, Siri, it will tell you that first green is a hue in the spectrum of color, but then goes on to say an area covered with plants that are alive, concerned with or supporting the protection of the environment, and not harmful. Okay, green really does mean life, right? So I'm, I'm getting excited now. So always green, always not harmful, always productive, always, okay. I'm, uh, so I'm getting excited now. And as, so I'm thinking, wow, how opposite is that from what our governor is making Washington state to be, right? He's declaring it as the death state, that anyone and everyone come to Washington state, you can get a free abortion, you can, you can be whoever you want to be, whether God made you that way or not, you know, just come and we'll help you mutilate your body, we'll help you kill your children, we'll help you do all this stuff. But Washington state is the evergreen state, it's the always life state. And so as Christians, we need to use our, our productive, life-giving, creating words and proclaim that for our state, right? So God told me to declare Washington as the evergreen state, a state that is at all times, always and increasingly a place of life for all people, including those who live in the environment of their mother's womb. Yes, thank you, Lord. Now, you can take that and pray into it and see what God, how God expands that for you to pray, right? Because Washington State, I believe, one day is going to be the leader in pro-life. <laughs> I, I, yes, Lord, let's do this together. And, you know, uh, in 2000, I believe it was 17, it's been quite a few years ago, I, I went to our county commissioners and I asked them to create a proclamation for New Family Life Services that our, our county would be a county that's pro-life, that would be a county for life and uphold life. Now I used some words that they didn't quite agree with that were, um, what did they call them back then? Like I used the word sanctuary. They didn't like that word very well. It was a, a hot button or a red hot topic button at that time. So we had to change sanctuary, I had to take that out. But they wrote us a proclamation back then and I believe that words are life-giving and creative, and, and so I blew that proclamation up really big. <laughs> and I believe those words that are, they're gonna come to pass, that Stevens County one day will be a sanctuary um, county for life that will, up, most of our people already do uphold life and the sanctity of human life, right? From birth to death. And it's very important core value to most of us. And so I just urge you guys, begin to proclaim life into Washington State and let's see what happens. Um, I've been trying last year, I, I wanted to go to the March for Life in, in Olympia and uh, they, they weren't really having one, but Students for Life put a little get together together. And, and I wanted to go, and I said, God, I'm gonna, I want to go to this. And he said, okay, but I want you to get a bus, and I want you to take people with you. And I said, okay. So I'm thinking, school bus? What kind of bus? Well, he directed me to Spokane, and we, um, I, I said rented a bus, but when I called the company, they say, no, you don't rent a bus. You charter a bus, right? So I chartered a bus. I said, well, how much does it cost? Well, for the little bus, which took like 30 people, I think, it was almost $3,000. I thought, oh, okay, Lord. <laughs> if this is your will, it's your bill, right? <laughs> okay, so I said, well, okay, how much is the big bus, which took 50 people? And they said it was like $1,000 more to take 50 people. I said, okay, Lord, we know the cost now. I hung up the phone. I said, how are we going to do this, Father? And he said, okay, I want you to call this church, this church, and this church, and I want you to talk to this person. 
said, okay, so I called that church, that church, and that church, and I talked to that person, and by the time I was off the phone, we had over half of the, the money that we needed to rent the, rent, to charter the big bus, right? And so we ended up chartering a bus and going to Olympia. I took 33 people with me, and we um, almost tripled the size of the Student for Life gathering, and we spent all day in Olympia. We marched around the Capitol. We sang praises and worshiped God in front of the Capitol on the steps. Um, prayed in front of the, the governor's mansion quite a, quite a while and many different times. And it was the coolest thing that, one of the coolest things that he's ever done for me. So one of these days, and I'm hoping that um, Washington March for Life will, will kind of get together again and maybe June 24th, which is the anniversary of Roe versus Wade being overturned, they might have a gathering in Olympia again. And um, if God says to, to charter a bus, I'm going to charter a bus. And if you want to go, I'll give you the information to go. It, it was really a cool time. Um, yeah. So are there any questions? Yes. Uh, it's just, um, it came to mind about elections. Mm -hmm. And um, is there any groups that you're working with? Uh, because I, I feel like uh, that our state style of elections are not uh, necessarily uh, legitimate. I don't know that for a fact, so I, I, I don't know. But, um, you know, like, is there a movement? Or, is, to me, that feels like a great way to um, affect our government. Yes, it. you have to vote. If you haven't voted, you need to vote because that's that's what, one way that we're going to make our voices heard. Is, but if our votes don't count. I know. Um, and I unfortunately, I don't, I'm not working with any of those groups right now. Um, I am working with Family Policy Institute of Washington, and if you're not on their mailing list, I would strongly encourage you to get on their mailing list. They send out all of the legislation that's coming on the floor, and they encourage you to vote, to make your voices heard, so you can actually go to their website. You can, they'll tell you, you should, you know, our recommendation is to vote con or pro for these bills that are coming in. Those messages go to our representatives to encourage them um, in voting. We have three of the best representatives that I could say. They all vote very conservative right now. Um, but I do agree with you that our voting system needs to be fixed, um, but I don't know how to do that. Um, just making our voices heard, calling the governor, his office, calling our representatives, and just encouraging them and um, I was at a meeting, I think it was a Family Policy Institute meeting, and there was a lady there that said, if only 25 people out of the district call, the, the representatives sit up and take notice because that's a majority. Isn't that sad? 25 people. It tells me that we're not letting our voices be heard near enough. If, if only 25 people contacting the offices makes them sit up and take notice. Unfortunately, right now, um, the voting is pretty much along party lines. And so, as we know, um, the Democratic Party is the majority in both the uh, House and the Senate in Olympia right now. So a lot of ugly things are getting passed. Um, yes? What was the effect? Of what I know there was um, legislation before the Roe v. Wade that was about funding for Planned Parenthood. They were going to take funding away from them because most of their money comes from abortions. Yeah. So do you know anything? That, have they lost money? Um, with, with this cabinet, they have not lost money when uh, our former president was in he took a lot of money away from them, um, but it has been reinstated by the, our this current um, cabinet that's in. What kind of money do you get other than charity donations from churches? And we only survive, the, the resource center survives solely on private and um, individual donations. By choice? 
By choice, okay. yes. You would be um, tied to tied to the state if you took. Yes, yeah. uh, in the home we do have uh, we receive a grant through the homelessness fund okay. um, because most of our clients are homeless um, that come to us. And so we do receive a grant through the Homelessness Fund. Um, it's compared to the other grants that come out of that fund, ours is really small. <laughs> and what, what kind of money do, or what kind of assistance do you get for mental health or even um, or some of your moms um, in rehab or we have do, to have, do you have um, programs with the college? We have to refer all those programs out. And unfortunately, the only, we used to have a Christian counselor in Colville. I don't know of any right now. So most of our referring has to go through Tri-County or, or um, New Alliance. Okay. Yeah. But I would be very open if anyone knows of those kind of services that are faith-based. All right. Well, thank you for having us today. It's been a pleasure, and we'll hang around a little while if you have any other questions that you want to. I did have one more. Yes. Um, the um, the women who come in and get help from you, um, many of them probably don't have any insurance at all. Do you refer that out to? Um, most of our clients, if they are on state. Yeah. Or on state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're state um, supported. Okay. Yeah. Which is good because we pay <laughs> if, we're, if we're helping save lives. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is it time to go? No, no, no. We might finish that circle up. Oh, circle up. Circle up. Yeah. Let's see.